Hello everyone, this is part 4 of our video series How to Play the Modern Bononi And here we are going to be looking at uh, an important game in uh, chess history With White, it's Peter Laco Who is uh, at the time challenging for the World Championship Against the player with the black pieces, Vladimir Kramnik This is uh, game 13 of their match. At this point, uh, Laco, with only two games to go, uh, was up by one game and just merely needed to draw uh, this game and the next game and he would be crowned the world champion. So Vlad Kram Vladimir Kramnik, desperately needing a win, decides to mix it up with the modern Benoni here. So the game started out like this. And in a few moves, we get right into our classical variation. Knight e6 and castles. And I hope you've been following the videos from the beginning uh, where we discuss the three major plans uh, for black in the classical variation. And um, all the videos are will be uh, in chronological order on the playlist so uh, you know if you miss anything you can just go back but here is the plan uh, knight a6 and the idea is to play knight c7 and what this does is indirectly hinder um, white's plans from playing e4 e5 because of the additional pressure on the d5 pawn with these two knights here also the move b5 is supported uh, furthermore, if white plays a premature um, a5, the square b5, excuse me, b4 uh, can be invaded. But after the knight is on c7, even if a4, is, a4, a5 is played, then the b5 square can easily come under control for black here. So Kramnik goes with this option, knight a6. So uh, Lake of Castles and here 98 by Kramnik now notice that this move uh, Knight D2 was not forced by black or provoked uh, usually and as I showed in the other two games Rook E8 was played first and you usually have these two pieces attacking the pawn and then one of the options for white is to play Knight D2 as to avoid this uh, bishop trade here and also to later on bring the knight to c4 say after f3 however in this instance knight d2 wasn't provoked by the move rook e8 so this gave black an extra option so he plays knight e8 and now can play the move f5 so he's combining uh, two plans here so after knight e8 Knight c4, knight a c7. Of course, f5 was uh, possible here, and also keeping the uh, option of even jumping in there uh, open. For instance, after a premature a4, Kramnik chose to play knight a7. Standard reply a4, and now Kramnik decides on f5. E takes uh, f5 is played, and Kramnik opted for rook takes f5. Now, usual is uh, bishop takes f5. And for ex example, if white makes you know some average run of the mill moves like bishop e3. Bishop f3 or even rook a3, black can improve the position of this knight here uh, by playing simply knight a6 and just coming back here to b4. Okay, and uh, this is one of the downsides of this move a4. And now this uh, knight has a large influence controlling these squares. All right. And this is the reason why uh, 
instead of a move like bishop e3, rook a3, or uh, bishop f3, you know, again, like I said, your um, run-of-the-mill moves, white will play sharper and play a move like bishop f4. Okay? So, even though knight a6 is possible here, with this pressure here, okay, uh, this can be very uncomfortable uh, for black. So let's get back to the game. Kramnik opted for a rook takes f5. Now, again, what did rook f5 do? It prevented this move. Okay, so it's all about give and take in chess, and it's all about ideas. Okay, it's not Kramnik didn't just arbitrarily choose to take rook takes, you know, play rook takes f5. He had an idea. So he prevents bishop f4. However, the downside is that, and it might have not been a downside for him, you know, obviously. I'm sure he's wrecking, you know, the situation. But now the exchange of light square bishops forced. And in principle, this exchange is favorable for white because of the weakness that, uh, you know, results around the light squares. Look back. Bishop takes. Rook takes. And now queen b3. b6. Knight b5. Knight takes b5. A takes b5. And now rook c7. What's interesting that I forgot to mention is that Kramnik... Uh, Going back, you know, a few moves, Kramnik had played this as white against Kramnik. Excuse me, Kramnik had played this as white against Ivanchuk in 1995. So it's funny how these, um, you know, games will repeat. You know, they get in these similar uh, positions. So Rook C7, this is a great move because it defends and still gives Black a chance to attack the F2 pawn. So very... Um, very good move and good way of defending without losing your offense. Bishop d2. And of course he just wants to, you know, deal with this strong bishop. Rook cf7, bishop c3, and now queen d7. f3. Making sure e4 is gripped. So Kramnik is playing in real positional style, just building up small positional advantages and one and um desiring to eliminate all black counterplay before uh basically closing in like a boa constrictor notice you had this pawn here it's weak this pawn is weak white wants to eliminate the strong bishop yes some weaknesses on the queen side so black has to play dynamically in order to um uh equalize uh, in this game and have a chance uh, to win okay Cause, because the static advantages are in white's favor so here g5 Kramnik needs a win as I said at the beginning so he's taking chances so g5 93 and now rook f4 rook f e1 h5 queen c2 and now queen f7 now, g4 would be a little bit uh, premature because of the, the simple response. Um, f takes g4, h takes g4, uh, followed by um, queen g6. So let's see if we can uh, get that on the board for you. So, g4. F takes, H takes, and Queen G6. And you can see the problem here is that uh, it hinders Black's activity as, you know, you had the, this pin here. And then the Queen is just all in Black's territory, okay? And they're hitting, you know, the pawns and, you know, that's just not a good position uh, for Black there. So he waits. He plays the move Queen F7. 
now h3 bishop d4 and now bishop takes rook takes and now knight f5 this move um, basically forces an end game and so Lego is trying to basically again calm everything down calm down the storm and so he's found a move that he believes will just uh, you know give him you know at least a draw so knight f5 queen takes queen rook rook takes e8 check king f7 and now this rook goes to b8 rook d takes d5 and now rook takes a a7 check king e6 rook e8 check king f6 and here uh g4 uh, is played now this is a risky move because of the you know the fur it, it creates some further weaknesses in the white's position the white's position i know raymond keen had suggested the move uh, uh rook h7 here just simply just attacking the pawn so g4 h takes h takes and now rook d1 Sorry, h takes d4, h takes d4, rook d1 check, and king f2, and rook to e5, rook h8, rook d2 check, and now Lego has to be very careful, king g3, not to get caught up in the mating net, rook e2, and now Lego plays rook f8 check now this kind of leads to some problems later uh, it has been suggested this to play rook h6 check king e5 rook e7 king d5 rook takes rook takes and now rook h5 with a, com a complicated ending less dangerous for white you see Okay, so um, after where are we at here? Let's go back to um, this king being checked by rook d1 here, and okay, so king f2, rook e5, king h8. Rook d2, king, there we go, king g3, and now rook e, e2. Rook f8 check, which we said was a mistake. King g6. Rook g8, king f6. Rook f8, king e6, rook e8 check. And of course, Kramnik doesn't want to take any kind of draw, but... Lako was able to force an exchange of rooks. And now king to g6, excuse me, g7, rook e5. Okay, and now here black has an advantage. His king is better. Right, right in the center of the board. White's king is off to the side. There's a pawn majority over here. And um and it further advanced than his opponents. I mean what what more can you ask for? <laughs> rook b7. c4. Rook b8. Sorry about that. C4. What was played? Yeah, Rook takes. Uh, yeah, Rook B7. Hold on, I messed up something here. Rook B7, C4. There it is. Rook takes B6. Now Rook E2 was played. F4. This was given like crazy amount of exclamation marks. I remember Kasparov had uh, was talking about this game, and he had. Uh, said that this this was the uh, most important move in the variation right here because basically Lako was forced I mean he's making only moves here to draw to hold the position 
King F7. I'm sorry, King F2. G takes F4. Rook B8. Rook B3. I mean, it looks like it's over. Now, Kramnik analyzed this ending. I mean, you probably could find it on the internet, but I know it's in the Informator. And, um, I mean, it's a, a, you know, a lot of analysis. But basically, instead of Rook B3, Kramnik says Rook G3 is the best move. Okay? But then he says the best line for both sides still leads to a draw. So Rook B3. B6, King E4, and this is an end game worth study, but of course that would be outside of the scope of this video. But it just shows you the possibilities of the Bononi and why players will um, depend on it when they need a win. They 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 won't they might not play it faithfully, but when they need a win, this is the the opening that gives you those possibilities. So king e4. So uh, what do we got here? B b6. Let me just go back. Okay, so what do we have here after rook b8? Rook b3. B6. Here we go. I lost the... Uh, Lost my move again. I'm, I apologize. Um, I got excited for a second. Okay, so here we are. All right, rook b3, rook b8, rook b3, b6. There we go. King e4, and now rook e8 check. And this was a mistake here. And Kramnik played return the favor and played king d3. Of course, it's easy to say, oh, that's a mistake. That's a mistake in the heat of the moment. But after years gone by and, you know, people analyze the position, instead of king d3, king d4 is supposed to be uh, the the move or is the move. And again, like I said, d3 is the most natural move to make. You know, to move the king forward in the position, cutting off the approach, the other king, etc., etc., so the fact that he played this move, I mean, you know, it's hard to uh, default him there. But king d4 is supposed to be the move. And then if rook e2, f3, again, more amazing moves. Rook d2, king e4. Rook takes d6. Rook takes b2, check. King g3 and then c3. And white can't stop black's past pawns. Okay, because then the king will be able to get involved. So, again, that's after, you know, after the fact. You know, people an analyze it with engines and, um, you know, and, you know, so again, it's very hard to fault uh, Kramnik there. He played king d3. And now rook e2. d5. King f3. D4. I mean, it looks like he will be winning here. G5, C3, B takes, D takes, Rook G2, Rook B2, B7, Rook takes B7, King takes F4, the Rook comes back, King G1, C2, and now Rook C1, and it's the only move. But it's enough to draw the game because this pawn is too far advanced. So rook b1 happened, rook takes c2, king takes c2, g6, king d3, king f5, rook b5, check, king f6, rook b6, king f7, and then finally rook takes g6. King takes g6, and the game was drawn. So Kramnik still had to go into that final game needing a win after uh, missing a win. Uh, you know, coming so close with the black pieces uh, in this game. Um, and, of course, you could go look at the history. You know Kramnik uh, was able to pull it out in one of the 
most amazing uh games ever uh just you know the pressure what was on the line Lako having a chance to be the first uh, Hungarian champion wow um you know whew. like I said I just you know I'm thinking about it right now but again that's outside of the scope of this uh video series we're talking about how to play the modern Benoni and so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. You had a combination in that last game of two plans, one with F5 and the idea of knight A6 and uh, knight C7 and against the classical variation. So, um, you know, just to summarize, again, these four games, uh, This we, we looked at some typical structures in the, um, in the modern Benoni. We saw the main struggle was between white's initiative on the king's side, black's on the queen's side. And we saw a reversal in game one. We saw uh, both sides playing kind of on their opposite flanks. That See, because normally you're supposed to play on your stronger side, etc., etc. We saw a complete reversal in game one. We saw black playing on the king's side, white playing on the queen's side. All right? Um, white's plan playing on the queen's side with the break B4, right? At the A5, as mentioned, um, we see Black seizing the initiative on the king side. Um, knight E7, another another thing to remember is the move Knight E8 to C7 is, is useful. Um, when after A6 by Black, White plays a quick A5 and tries to shut down the queen side. Um, what else to think about? You know, to, because we're going to be moving on from the classical uh, formation. Uh, again, remember White's idea of blocking the C4 pawn. You know, transferring his knight to uh, to C4 and putting uh, pressure on D6. Okay. And then maneuvering his pieces and um, pressing black in the center with the move E5. All right. Remember the plan F5 again after knight BD7. Also, um, don't forget your importance the importance of the pass pawn on C4, right? Pushing the move C4, um, if you're black. Um, oh, yeah, we saw Fisher's idea knight H5 allowing the double H pawns, all right. And remember, if you allow that, you got to play over there on the king side. You got to utilize that. But again, we saw the drawbacks in the little variation I showed uh, Petrosian and Ryskovsky, All right, where the move rook a3 was played and, you know, those the weaknesses weren't justified over there on the, um, you know, after knight h5. So sometimes you can play it, sometimes you can't. Um, what else? Yeah, the rook lift. We just mentioned that from rook a1, uh, from a1 to a3. That's a common theme for white. And with the idea of transferring that rook along the third rank, with uh, attack, you know, attacking possibilities on the king side mainly. But remember, it also can put pressure on the uh, black queen side by just simply going to b3. All right. And then finally, in this game, we saw the um, basically a duel of weaknesses right between a7 and b5 at the knight takes b5 and a takes b5 okay and then um but we saw black uh defend and attack simultaneously with a powerful move uh, move 18 uh rook c7 so that does it for our uh uh the section on the classical variation so now and um after this we'll be moving on to the modern variation of the modern uh, Benoni. I hope you enjoyed this series so far. Stick around and, uh, you know, please like and subscribe. And uh, I will see you on the next video.